You're looking live at Rafferty Stadium as it's a battle of crosstown bragging rights. Sacred Heart makes the short drive across town to take on Fairfield University under the lights here on the Stag Sports Network and Lacrosse TV. Good evening, everybody. JJ Duke here with you on what is a rather chilly night in the Nutmeg State, but hey, it's a standalone lacrosse game on this Wednesday night. Fairfield University, a one and one mark thus far in the season, opening with a 20 to 10 loss at Lehigh, and then last weekend knocking off Wagner by 14 goals to seven, Sacred Heart. 0-2 on the year, losses to 13th ranked St. Joseph's and Lafayette last weekend as we're underway here. Fairfield in the white jerseys going from right to left on your screen. Sacred Heart in the road red jerseys. A face-off violation will give the first possession to the visiting Pioneers. The Pioneers who are averaging just a little over six goals per contest. They're trying to start a bit more bit more efficiently to get things going here but again on a rainy cold night like this anything can happen and of course when you got crosstown bragging rights at stake it's gonna make way for a pretty interesting contest these teams usually tend to play high scoring affairs as over the last few years both teams have been getting at least over a dozen goals per game as a deflected effort off the mark fairfield win the backup and it'll be the stags a one and done defensively to start winning that race here to the near side would be 44, Zach Antony, you the sophomore out of Tampa, Florida. Fairfield, a change in goal, though it is a little bit by design. Talking with head coach Andrew Baxter in the buildup today, the freshman Will Snyder getting the nod after Colin Consoli getting the first two games of the season. This was by design, as Coach Baxter saying he's loving the, uh, the fight and the battle across all five goalies that he's got on his roster, so a chance to give the youngster out of Brightwaters, New York, a run out. First line offense or attack here for Fairfield. They go up against Alex Pazienza, the junior from Holtzville, New York. Pass took a deflection on the way through. Picked up, though, by Max Paparozzi. Will Consoli, the younger brother of Colin, wears one. Both from Glen Rock, New Jersey. Jack McKenna, 29 in white. Last year's CAA Rookie of the Year. Just held to one goal on Saturday, the first time in his career where he did not pick up a multi-goal contest. Fairfield laid on the shot clock, though, down to 16. Good work here by Sacred Heart and closing down the angles in front of Pazienza. From low to high, pass picked off, well sought to. And both teams won and done defensively without getting a shot. That was Jack Ramsey, the sophomore out of Bayshore, New York, number 21, with the interception. The Pioneers looking to clear with Ben Polanchi, and he does so successfully. So both teams still trying to find the wherewithal here going forward. Is Johnny Morgan, number 24, into the attack. The senior from New Fairfield, Connecticut. The man you have to watch out for for Sacred Heart, 51, Jake Ward, who is the NEC Rookie of the Year last season. 17 goals and 26 total points. As he parks himself just on... Well, actually goes now behind the office as a drive out in front. Another good stick check from behind Antoniu once again. We made a play in the backup before in the last defensive possession, coming away with the ground ball before the cause turnover. And Fairfield get another stop as Luke Akupski will clear. And Fairfield once again going to work here. Bryce Ford, one of the captains, setting up. Behind the cage, driving. Finds an option with Shane Osborne. Osborne, just a little bit high with that effort. Good closeout by Nick Handy, 44, on the short stick middies for Sacred Heart. Still plenty of time on the backup, though, as Ford with six goals on the season, five of which came last Saturday at Wagner. Resend the offense. Good hit by Akupski trying to drive through, and he's able to stick with it, fighting off four different defenders, but finally the ball was dislodged. Pazienza covers it up. Believe that was Morgan. Yeah, Johnny Morgan coming all the way back to make a play. Morgan, an attacker by trade, but doing work on both sides of the ball, so both teams, a couple of turnovers here in the early stages. Is still yet to get a shot on target. Fairfield with one look in that last possession. Now the Pioneers will slow things down. Pioneers, three wins, ten losses in the NEC, though. 
The Northeast Conference not sponsoring men's lacrosse for the next two seasons, so Sacred Heart taking refuge in the MAC, a team that is projected to finish eighth in the league this season. Of course, Fairfield most notably playing almost all their sports in the MAC, but in the CAA for men's lacrosse. Mishandle, though, by John Murray, 46 in red, and another turnover as Sacred Heart still trying to find any rhythm on the offense. It's a bit unsettled right now as Ford will go near side with McKenna. The local product, Jack McKenna, at a Fairfield Ward High School. Thought about driving one-on-one, -on -one, but gives it back off to Ford. Bryce, who last season had 13 points in league play, will have it go back to the top now for Will Consoli. He's fronted by Ben Polanchi. Ford once again versus with Consoli. Consoli trying to find a little bit of shooting space inside the slot, throws it back out, but beyond its intended mark, that was for Paparozzi, the ball goes across the line, and a violation, and once again, both of these teams, again, because it was well, not exactly a pretty night to begin with, it was raining up until the start of this one, field is slick, cold temperatures, the guys are not crisp on the passes thus far. So Carson Spooner, who wears 25, the senior from California, will settle in behind. Three points away is Spooner from 50 career points for the Pioneers. He draws a shorty in Matt Rice. That pass goes beyond its intended mark. It's how Mikio trying to pick up the ground ball there. Another good fight with Antoniu, was swooping in to keep the possession alive. Ryan Stout, Stout the junior from Pennsylvania. And Jake Ward getting his first any sort of meaningful touch. Keeps the possession going. Nice dodge, a drive to the middle. It's there, the first save for Will Snyder. That was uh, 24, Johnny Morgan with the effort. Will Snyder, perhaps the first of many saves in a Fairfield Stags jersey. Didn't really have a whole lot of traffic in front and read the bounce nicely. So there's the first shot on target for either team. Just a little bit over six minutes into this contest. Bryce Ford dodging, works out here to this near side. Flips it across, tight angle chance. That one goes in and Fairfield take the early lead. Max Paparozzi and the Stags on the board. Paparozzi, who a season ago registered 40 points, was able to win the race to the spot. Gambling on that pass was Jack Ramsey. Doing a nice job there, Paparozzi, depositing that after a three-point weekend at Wagner, another one of those NEC programs that moved over to the MAC. They're joined by LIU, who's a team that Fairfield played in a, a preseason scrimmage. Fairfield, you goal number 21, Max Paparozzi. What a ground ball on the far side. Fairfield winning the faceoff. That was Bryce Ford doing the work. Stags, of course, having to replace the outstanding Frankie Labetti. One faceoffs at 53% last year. Dylan Smith is going to be the lead man, but Coach Baxter also saying that, like the goalie group, the faceoff guys have been putting in a lot of work, building a lot of confidence, and just providing that good competition amongst each other as well. Trying to battle for space and for opportunities as Ford, met by the double, goes back with the goal scorer in Paparozzi. Osborne trying to dodge. Good closeout, though. Comes back to McKenna. Osborne able to flip it across. Good ball movement, but the pass a little bit low there from Hank D'Ambrogi. Freshman from Delaware. Kind of handcuffing that one, and it's a turnover there, and that was one thing that Coach Baxter saying that the team really had to limit. It was a, a tough go of it for the first couple of games. In fact, Lehigh never really got settled into their offense, but said so the team needs to do a better job just valuing possession, I'm trying to simplify things. Because there should be a push from behind, and it is. So an unsuccessful clear for Sacred Heart. Great work there by... I believe that was Josh Demko. Yeah, 17, the sophomore Demko out of Carthage, New York. Able to win the race to the spot. Took a little bit of a blow from behind, but still able to uh, salvage possession, get it back off of a pioneer turnover. McKenna, oh, it's a good idea looking for Paparozzi, but again, 
Slick ball, that pass was not cleanly found. And driving transition, John Murray just puts it wide. Actually, that one hit off the pipe there. I thought that ball was going to go miles wide. Ground ball being fought for on the near side, and Fairfield able to come away with it. Braden Lynch, 31 in white, the junior from Baldwinsville, New York, who is the CAA Defensive Player of the Week last week for that ground ball. The teams have now combined for eight turnovers in this first quarter. Just the one goal coming from Max Paparozzi. Almost nine minutes into this contest now. McKenna, he draws the flag. Delayed penalty against Sacred Heart coming. And Bryce Ford will just trot over to the far pylon and allow the rest of the original unit to come on. Fairfield 5 of 13 on the extra man as another flag comes flying out. Actually, no, that was just a Fairfield player moving it from the high scoring area. That pass is going to go all the way through. Fairfield do a really nice job actually to keep that ball on. Jake Gilbert, freshman from Foxborough, Mass, keeping the play alive. Comes now near side. That shot just whistles wide from Rob Moore. But Fairfield now to the man up. Team there, 5 of 13 thus far on the season. Sacred Heart. Actually, ironically enough, only taken the three penalties in two games thus far. They've killed two of them. We'll see if it's just the 30-second technical. Cross-check. Oh, no, I think they locked that one in. Yeah, it's going to be a locked-in penalty. It's our crew of Brian and Tim Luxinger and Peter Weaver making the call. Now the question is how long. I think I just saw the one go up. Still have yet to get it on the scoreboard. It's going to be a one-minute locked-in penalty on Jack Ramsey. Jack Ramsey cross-checking at the 538 mark. Especially for cross-checking. So Stag's going to go to work here on the man up. And a number of key man up players from last year's team gone, including Taylor Strau, who is always good seemingly for a man up goal or two per game. McKenna works it near side, Consoli underneath. Good ball movement by the Stags with the pass just a little too low as Paparozzi had to stoop down to get it. Still 40 seconds left on the penalty. McKenna playing the apex on this man up unit. Versus back to the alley, looking for McKenna, but he tried to shoot that one before he caught it. And Fairfield, no, nearly a one and done. Bryce Ford, though, great play to knock it loose, and the Stags will stay with it. Outstanding work by Ford to dislodge it from Jack Carr's stick. So 16 seconds still left here on the man up. Ambrogi will reload. Comes with Consoli. That pass a bit too strong for Paparozzi. Backed up by Consoli with five on the clock. Reverses near side. A look in the alley. Good save, Pazienza. That was right at the end of the man up. Alex Pazienza, who saved eight shots last week in the loss to Lafayette, keeping it just a one goal game. And Fairfield. And had a turnover during that sequence, nearly coughed it up on a second, but were able to generate a look in a good scoring area. But nothing comes of it. So Johnny Morgan quickly ahead. But before that turnover, a timeout taken by Sacred Heart. As that kind of bails out the Pioneers team. We'll keep it here during that stoppage as you're getting a look now at Will Snyder in the center of your picture. Product out of St. Anthony's High School on the island. Part of a couple of state championship winning teams in 21 and 22 and earning the championship game MVP honors in his senior season, all league as well. And yeah, and when I spoke with Coach Baxter about kind of what his goalie unit, and he was pretty candid in saying that he would be utilizing this game and potentially others as a chance to, in his words, collect data on some of his goalies because there just wasn't enough during the course of the uh, preseason scrimmages. We could be seeing Owen Hirsch at some point later on this game as well. Sacred Heart on the opposite end. A big roster under John Bosti, the 1999 Fairfield University graduate. 
Trying to get one on the Stags as these two teams now you know, seemingly to meet every season. Fairfield do have a pretty comfortable advantage in the all-time history. 4-2, won the last three series that started, uh, I should actually say restarted back in 2019 after not playing each other for a better part of a decade and a half. Fairfield won the matchup last year, 19 to 16. But as I said, when these two teams meet up, there's goals that come. Last time that these two programs played here was on March the 17th of 2021. The Stags won that 14 to eight. And in that first meeting to restart the rivalry in 2019, it was a 12-11 thriller. The Sacred Heart still looking to get you some sort of consistency going on the offense here. Taking three shots thus far, the one on target. Snyder with the lone save of the game. But a good stop there by Alex Pazienza to deny Bryce Ford a great look in the far alley to try and double Fairfield's lead. And in fact, is that snow across the way or is that just a fine mist? I mean, it's nearly cold enough to have snow, but I wouldn't be surprised either way. So the Pioneer timeout came right before they turned it over. Still 40 seconds left on the shot clock. Comes to Spooner near side and reverses back to Mikio. And a good save again by Snyder. Loose rebound being battled for. Braden Lynch trying to kick it to himself. He couldn't recover though, but another save by Snyder. Had to go down low to fight that one off. It's a good stop nonetheless. It resets the shot clock to 60. Comes again, this is Skyler Wild, 45, who plays it in underneath. Spooner drawing the short stick matchup. Ryan Lancaster, the man that's guarding him. Lancaster, the product out of Maryland. Did a nice job of closing down the angles. Not a good look there. Wild kind of bowled that across the ground. A comfortable save for Snyder. And Fairfield looking to push here. Under three minutes to play in this first quarter. Shots four aside. Fairfield might have found a seam here. It's unsettled. Four, though, passing up the look. Kind of ran out of a good shooting angle, so he'll just reload on the offense. Fairfield only just the two shots on target. The goal from Paparozzi and then the extra man effort right at the end of the 60 seconds from Bryce Ford. Jake Gilbert right at Pazienza. He's going to look to play quickly. It's a great idea for Nick Handy, but he slipped as he caught the ball. And Fairfield restore possession with Rob Moore. Also, Jack McKenna doing some nice work there. And what Coach Baxter said about his reigning CAA Rookie of the Year in McKenna, he's a guy that's just so dangerous riding, even as an attacker. Never gives up on any possession. And Fairfield with a second look here. We're looking to try to feed it to the big man, but Ford now in the alley. He gets knocked to the ground. Pazienza trying to knock it away. Ford still keeps it. Still plenty of time on the shot clock now for Gilbert. Bryce Ford showing great strength and balance as he drew three, but able to still keep the ball within. Jake Candelino fronting him. And pull from Boxford, Mass. Paparozzi. He also draws double. Late on the shot clock now, down to 20. Consoli off the pipe! Will Consoli only inches from doubling Fairfield's lead. Ground ball from Zach Antoniou keeping it alive. Nice dodge in the middle by Moore. That one fought off by Pazienza. Fairfield another look as McKenna Restores the possession. Long, long offensive set here for Fairfield. This Sacred Heart defense has basically been on their heels for the better part of two minutes or so. They've gotten a couple, or at least the one stop, but couldn't do anything with it. That was the best look of the bunch, though. Consoli ringing the iron. 
Consoli once again, but he passes up the look. Far side, Rob Moore. Bryce Ford will slow things down. Game and shot clock pretty much even here, so Fairfield can hold for the last. Another thing that Coach Baxter was talking about in the pregame that his team needed to do a better job at managing out these certain situations. A loose ball in front, a great save by Pazienza. He denies Bryce Ford, basically kind of a scramble play right there, just trying to make something out of nothing. That's a brilliant save there from Alex Pazienza. Now four for him in this first quarter, and Sacred Heart maybe one last heave towards the goal. With five seconds left, he doesn't like it, so that will do it here for this first period. A defensive affair, 15 minutes in the book in the battle for Fairfield bragging rights, but it's the lone goal coming from Max Paparozzi that gives the Stags a one goal lead. We'll be back in a moment on the Stag Sports Network and Lacrosse TV. One quarter in the books here at Rafferty Stadium. Fairfield leading Sacred Heart just by the one goal, Max Paparozzi. Striking the back of the net with 8.33 left in the period, but nice little battle between the two goalies. Will Snyder for Fairfield in his debut, stopping all three Sacred Heart shots on target. And Alex Pazienza stopping four, including one man up goal, the or man up opportunity. Team's trade ends here, pushing the back against the Pioneers. Will give Fairfield the possession. Just the third face off in the game, by the way. Jack Carr whistled for the foul, and Fairfield will go to work. Again, J.J. Duke with you. Thanks for spending part of your Wednesday evening, the lone Division I men's lacrosse game in action. Whether at this time or on the day in general, delighted that you could spend part of your evening here with us from a chilly Fairfield, Connecticut. At least we could say the rain has stopped and actually a pretty good crowd here on this near side, all things considered. In the low 30s, but... These folks out here are battling as battling that one was Pazienza, but he couldn't keep it out. Will Consoli picking up his first goal at home in his Fairfield career, doubling the Stags' lead. As the freshman saw no one step up to him, and Pazienza got a piece of it, but just not enough. And the former two-time All-State honoree from Glen Rock High School, his third tally of the season. Real togetherness with that Fairfield team. And Coach Baxter saying that this is a group that he's brought in this year that are, are just an absolute bunch of sponges in the sense that they're just absorbing so much information, but they want to get better. They want to keep battling for each other. He knows that with the young group that he's got, as he graduated five from a season ago, but there were five immense players. You know, it's going to take some time. There's going to be some building blocks, and there's some hard days that even on their own as a coaching staff, he was telling me before, that kind of almost have to do a bit more teaching the game than you know, kind of coaching the finer details. But certainly there is progress, and it's not just progress for progress sake. There, there have been some good days with this team in the early season. And they're looking to build on their win from this past week and away at Wagner as Fairfield facing back-to-back -back teams from Mac men's lacrosse. Nice dodge, and the goal to go as well. Johnny Morgan picking up his first of the season. Beautiful spin there to lose the defender and almost kind of lost his balance in the process, but put enough behind it to deposit the shot past Will Snyder. And the Pioneers on the board, and it's never easy when you go an entire quarter without picking up a tally, especially in the shot clock era now, but a great finish nonetheless. Dylan Smith taking the faceoffs for Fairfield, the understudy under Frankie Labetti last year. Smith at 45% coming into today. He's able to outfox Will, uh, excuse me, Nikki Cassano. And Fairfield back on the front foot. It is funny though that. Actually, a foul gets called and will go the other way after the Fairfield turnover that one of the legends for Fairfield men's lacrosse faceoff guys, Will Fox, 2018 graduate, is on the opposite side today, one of the assistant coaches under John Bosti. Certainly a guy that can, uh, you know, 
share a whole lot of wealth of knowledge in terms of winning faceoffs. A turnover, though, and a chance here for Fairfield on the run. That one just goes wide. Max Paparozzi unleashing that one, just couldn't keep it on frame after the team's trade turnovers. Has not been the cleanest of games thus far. The team, teams have combined for 13 on the night. Josh Demko into the alley. That one also wide of the mark. Fairfield are now starting to pile on the shots here. They've averaged in their two games 37.5. Sacred Heart have allowed 44 in their two games played as well. Paparozzi. That's a hold against Fairfield. The second time in this quarter, a foul on the offensive end. Concedes possession without even a shot on target. Fairfield did get at least a couple of looks off. Good pass that time from Pazienza. And a successful clear, clearing game for the Pioneers. Five of eight thus far. The Stags unblemished in their six attempts. Jake Garb, junior from New Jersey. His first line offense, one of those guys that's expected to carry the load for scoring along with Ward. Nice dodging again. Better save, though, by Snyder. There's that man, Johnny Morgan, who just scored a goal a couple of minutes ago. Pulling another nifty move, but Fairfield looking to run here in transition. Pass to the far side. McKenna with all sorts of bodies around him, able to get some sort of a shot off. Pazienza looking to go the other way here. It's end-to-end -end stuff here at Rafferty Stadium. Pioneers going to try their luck. Nice play from behind, though, by the Antoniou. But the referee said it wasn't just dislodged from the stick. It was also deflected. Zach Antoniou has been an absolute ball hawk here in this first half. A couple of ground balls to his credit. But it remains possession with the Pioneers, who will continue on their season opening four game road trip on the weekend when they travel down to CAA opposition Stony Brook. As they joined from the America East after the conclusion of last season. Team that Fairfield will face in late April. <laughs> 23 on the shot clock, comes now to Skyler Wild. Senior from Bayport, New York, reverses back to the top. John Murray dodging, can't evade the pull. Good work by Eli Adams, who wears 51. Six on the shot clock. Sacred Heart just trying to generate some sort of look. Garb able to fight off a couple. Finds an option near side. Good save. And they're going to say possession will stay with Sacred Heart. Right at the end of the shot clock. Was a decent look in the alley, but once again, Snyder with the goods there. That's his fifth save of the night. Murray, who had that effort. Waiting for more options to come off the bench. Murray dodging. Puts it underneath. Jake Ward drawing a shorty. Good close down, though, by Luka Kupski. Tight angle chance. That one went wide of the mark. That ball just trickles out of bounds. No reset of the shot clock, though, as again, didn't touch the goalie or the pipe. This is, again, a second look in this possession. Spooner will reload. 10 on the clock. It's got to go quickly now. John Murray once again trying to dodge to the slot. He gets an angle. It's wide of the mark. Still four left on the shot clock. Maybe enough time for a quick feed from Garb from behind. Those Sacred Heart are already getting the subs off the field, so it's a violation. And Fairfield is a long defensive possession there, but a couple of saves from Snyder. A couple of off angle chances as well. And look, we'll keep it at 2-1 here with six minutes gone in the second quarter.
A timeout taken by Fairfield as Coach Andrew Baxter timeout. trying to slow Fairfield. some things down here and also diagram something after Fairfield have been a little bit quiet at stages through this game offensively and just creating those grade A looks. And I spoke about it a little bit at the end of the first quarter about recognizing situations and trying to learn from it. I mentioned a couple of minutes ago how this Fairfield team still very much learning on the job uh, because of the amount of just young players and also inexperienced players. Sure, there's a, a number of juniors and seniors. And in fact, there's around 23 of them or so, and grad student in there as well. But just the amount of games played and meaningful minutes, there hasn't been all that much. So Fairfielder you know, taking these moments here, it's learning times, but also you want to make sure you get these moments right after a long defensive possession and two just to give that unit a rest. Sacred Heart on the other side of things. Looking to just build. You know, they had a tough go of it against St. Joe's to open up the season. Lafayette, another decent team out of the Patriot. When they open up league play against Siena on the 11th March, they're certainly going to be wanting to hit the ground running, of course, that conference. So they mentioned temporarily the home for the Pioneers. Again, they're, uh, they're looking to make some noise and probably felt a little, you know, teams might not be taking them as you know highly as they would want. Projected eighth in the league with only VMI and Wagner behind them. Top six for the MAC in the preseason poll. Marist and Manhattan, those are the two teams that are featured, of course, at Jaspers. What a season they had from last year winning the conference. Siena, Mount St. Mary's, another one of those teams that left the NEC to come to the MAC. LIU and Quinnipiac would be the six they were projected to make the playoffs. The Pioneers looking to make some noise is now after the Fairfield timeout. Stags with the ball, still plenty of time left on the shot clock. Jack McKenna still kind of held quiet here. A player who last year put home 43 goals every game of the 14. He had multi-goal efforts. Still averaging a hat trick per game in his career, but looking to get on the mark here. Finds an option, but nice closeout, denying a lot of steam on Jake Gilbert's effort. That's a big hit, though, in transition from Will Consoli, who's done a lot of good things here in this game. He's got the goal, of course, but made a number of defensive plays. Keeps the possession. It's actually a full shot clock as Sacred Heart did have possession of the ball. It's another failed clear as well for John Bosti's team. But now the Stags need to be a bit ruthless right now. Nice roll dodge at the far side of the crease. Jake Coleman is not able to find McKenna, and it goes back to Pazienza. Come back to Pazienza on the clear as Fairfield done a really nice job just mucking it up in the midfield, forcing another number of turnovers. And I don't know if, wow, that was awfully close there. David Barkkiss, number five, just got it across the halfway line in time. Near side official had a long look, kept the shot clock in his eye, but said it was just cleared in time. He had the 20 seconds to get it across. And now a chance here for the Pioneers to tie it up. Spooner. That pass just a bit too tall there. He was looking for Garb. Braden Lynch. Always you see him around the ball. Actually, no, excuse me, that was not Lynch. I saw a one there thinking it was 31, but 51 Eli Adams at the ground ball. Nice play, though, in transition by Spooner. Lancaster's asking for a whistle. It is a hold, though, against Carson Spooner. So Fairfield get the reset with 6.29 left in the second quarter. And Fairfield with the one tally in the first, coming from Max Paparozzi. Will Consoli made it 2-0. Under 40 seconds gone in the quarter. Then Johnny Morgan made it 2-1 shortly after that. Shots right now 13-10 in favor of Fairfield. Bit of the second unit on right now for the Stags on the attack side. Hank D'Ambrogi. 
Delaware Player of the Year last year. Demko, really tough pass to bring in, does well. Bryce Ford at goal line extend. Going to have to do really well from that sort of distance to beat Pazienza, who saved six. Kind of one of those old school, just a possession shot there. Ford, though, drawing the 1v1. Good closeout before it able to reload, and he scores. It looked for a second there that Ben Polanchi was able to cut down the drive. But then Ford says, well, not so fast. Let's go right by you anyways and score. Yeah, beautiful little inside move there. And Pazienza thought that he did enough to cut down the angle, but Ford goes from high to low. And Bryce gets goal number seven on the season. After a 34-point campaign last year, only played in 10 games, missed a handful of games due to injury, and that was after missing the entire 21 season due to an injury. Was a college cross freshman All-American in the shortened 2020 season. Time of the goal, 534, no assist. Stags lead 2-1. to one. And Now Fairfield, after winning another faceoff here, keeping in possession right now, trying to Get a little cushion here with five minutes left to go in the second. Coleman underneath. Jake only played in a handful of games last season, so good to see him getting a run out. Jake Gilbert, former U.S. Lacrosse All-American, feeds it back to Consoli. Nice little fake there, goes underneath. Fairfield moving it around quickly right now. Good recovery as Candelino will shepherd it out wide. McKenna drawing a shorty. Reloads it back to Moore. Consoli's shot is blocked. Twenty-three seconds though still left. Gilbert. Trying to lose his mark, flips it back out to Consoli. He waits for a man to open up, and Fairfield. Nice work there being patient with the ball, and eventually Rob Moore found the space. And the Stags now lead 4-1 here. Yeah, you just have to sometimes wait for that little pocket to open up, and Consoli did a great job there drawing the double team and found Rob Moore, the sophomore, out wide. And after a goal and assist on the weekend to Wagner, Fairfield now starting to put together a little run. Pioneers have already used a timeout, just like Fairfield in this first half. So you'd have figured maybe John Bossy, if he didn't use one, would go to the one there. But a hold. I think that's the second faceoff violation against the Pioneers. The Stags will keep on looking here, trying to add to their lead. Certainly deserving of it right now. The goal score, or excuse me, no, it's a D'Ambrosi, my apologies. Gilbert. And Fairfield will slow it up. Moore. Got stood up there by Palanchi. Able to draw the slide though and find Coleman. Good ball movement, creates a look and that one goes home. Will Consoli once again. That time in the four alley and able to beat Pazienza to the near post. Fairfield five, Sacred Heart one. It's great work there by Moore to draw the double. Then Coleman recognized that it was a bit off balanced. And yeah, Pazienza just Slow to get over to that near post. Stags on a 3-0 run right now. And this is exactly what Coach Baxter was looking for out of this game. His team recognizing some of the soft spots in the Sacred Heart defense. They're executing as well. That, that's a big part. Recognition is certainly one thing, but you got to go out and finish a job. And Fairfield also doing a great job on faceoffs as well. They're up 6-2 in that category. 
And Nikki Cassano has just not really gotten into a role or a rhythm. That is a challenge spot, though, for the Pioneers, as through two games at 39.6%. Not to say that Fairfield's much better. They're averaging right around 47, but still they're just keeping the offensive flow going. And they're whittling down the clock to get to halftime, too. What a dodge, but a better save. Pazienza, I think that one came off of his helmet. Flag comes out, though. This is going to be against Fairfield, so the Pioneers now a chance to not only give their defense a little bit of a respite, but also to see if they can try and get back into this before halftime. The same save came off of Moore. And for Sacred Heart, one of ten on the man up through two games this season. A good chance for them. And obviously looking to try and get the goal nonetheless here. The delayed penalty, but even then more. Looking for that rhythm back on offense as Will Snyder's been a tough, tough riddle to solve. Great dodging in the middle, and that one goes in. Johnny Morgan once again. Had a lot of work to do from where he took the initial pass, dodging a couple and depositing it past Snyder. First he beats Matt Rice, then beats Antonio, and right before the check came out to meet him, Put that one home, and for Morgan, who had just 11 goals a season ago. He's got both here today for the visitors. Product out of New Fairfield, Connecticut. Always a very good high school program. About 30 minutes or so up north here. Big faceoff coming now for both of these teams, and it's a violation against Connor Callahan. Now, I thought that would have been the third against the Pioneers, but I must have had one missed off from earlier. Nonetheless, Fairfield, they can't run out the quarter, but they can take a lot of time off of the remaining minute 43. Curious, curious if here Coach Baxter elects to use a timeout, try and set up something on the offense. He's going to let his first unit run. Bryce Ford is one of the five goals for the Stags today. Goes off to Wilkins Sully. Nice dodge off to the left. Looking for an option. He goes at it on his own, and he scores from a long way out. Wilkins Sully responding, and that completes his first half hat trick. Well, I thought the... Uh, Crossfield pass is going to be on here for Rob Moore. Yeah, you see him drifting off to the bottom right of your picture. It might have been on anyways, but Consoli bet on himself, and he finished it with a plum. Yeah, a bit of traffic in front. Yeah, you can see Pazienza looking around at his defenders and saying, you got to clear out. Pick up a man, if anything else. And Fairfield wins another faceoff as Dylan Smith. He's won 8 of 10 here in this first half. And the Stags now can hold for the last. It is a clearing attempt, though. And again, it's all about managing out these situations here for Fairfield. They had a couple looks in similar capacities on Saturday at Wagner. Not taking full advantage of it. And Fairfield really don't need to start their move until about... You know, 20 seconds or so. Now the one disadvantage for Fairfield is they don't have a, a clock to look at behind the goal off to the right. The big scoreboard is down off to our left, but Bryce Ford here near side, you can see him peering across, sees that there's 23 seconds, and he'll wait before he goes to work, and Coach Backs are allowing this group to play it out here. Has a timeout to work with, but he's not going to use it. Ford dodging. Drives, great look in front. And again, patience is a virtue. Fairfield allowing their players to drift into those pockets of space. Jake Coleman getting on the board. And the Stags now thoroughly deserving this five goal lead. And you could see the two coming across and a beautiful feed. Bryce Ford, patient as ever. He's got himself a three point half with a goal and two assists. And Stags are getting it done on both sides of the ball right now. A late face-off here. 
Connor Callahan trying to get it, but once again, Dylan Smith winning it cleanly here, and that's going to do it for the first half. And it's probably the best half of lacrosse that Fairfield have played in this 2023 season. Outscoring Sacred Heart 6-2 in the quarter. Will Consoli with a hat trick in the first 30 minutes. And in the battle of Fairfield Town bragging rights, it's a stag seven, Pioneers two. Stay with us, back in a moment. Welcome back here to Rafferty Stadium on the campus of Fairfield University. Not too much scoring in the first quarter. Fairfield just getting the one tally, but the seals finally opened up in the second quarter. Fairfield ending the period on a very solid 2-0 run, but really it was just the high scoring offense from a number of different players. A 5-1 run over the last five and a half minutes. Fairfield's Will Consoli getting himself a four point half. Bryce Ford, Jake Coleman, Rob Moore, and Max Paparozzi also getting goals. Ford with two helpers. Johnny Morgan, kind of the lone man doing the job offensively for the Pioneers, getting a couple of goals. Been a nice battle between the two goalies as Will Snyder for the Stag stopping five. Alex Pazienza, seven but he is hoping that his defense can kind of lock it down and then the offense can go to work in the second half. When we come back, we'll have your first half stats and highlights. Get you ready for the second as you're watching Fairfield Lacrosse on the Stag Sports Network and Lacrosse TV. Moments away from the start of the third quarter here between Fairfield and Sacred Heart, the Stags. Six goals in that second period, three in total in the first half from Will Consoli. Meanwhile, two goals from Johnny Morgan for the Pioneers to keep them in it. Take a look back at your first half highlights. Fairfield spreading the field nicely in addition to Consoli's work. Getting tallies from Bryce Ford, Jake Coleman, Rob Moore, Max Paparozzi. The goalies, though, really coming to play here in this one. Will Snyder for Fairfield making five saves. Alex Pazienza stopping seven. Kind of just started to, you know, snowball later on in that second quarter when Fairfield tallied the majority of their goals in the last few minutes. Morgan was able to make it a 2-1 game, but Fairfield then started to go to work, just being patient, looking for the man to pop out into those little seams. The Stags up by five here, a few moments away from the start of the third. J.J. Duke here with you. Thanks for spending your Wednesday evening here with us on the Stag Sports Network and Lacrosse TV. Your first half stats, Fairfield out shooting Sacred Heart 21 to 11. Stags 10, uh, plus 10 on the ground balls as well, 19 to 9. Faceoffs have also been very good for Fairfield in this game. As with that win from Dylan Smith, he is 10 of 12. The Stags are a perfect 9 of 9 on clears. 8 of 12 from the Pioneers. Matt Rice, great ground ball to keep that possession alive. And Fairfield in the white jerseys going from left to right on your screen, getting the first look here to begin this third quarter. Fairfield again, one on one and one on the season. Sacred Heart still looking for their first victory. The Stags a season ago were only just minutes away from getting a conference tournament bid in the CAA, but they were upended at the end of the season by Delaware. We're looking to change that here today. Well, not in terms of the, uh, the tournament, but of course just trying to get that momentum heading into league play is this is one of three non-conference games at home. Building into that, well, there's no need for Will Consoli to build because he's just been rolling. That's four goals for the first year. He had two in two games coming into today and taking that one from kind of a tight angle after Jack McKenna doing all the work there to draw the double and then putting that one right over the head of Pazienza. And sometimes in sports you just have to keep feeding the hot hand and that is what Fairfield has done right now. They're feeding the hot hand and Will Consoli. Of course getting great work in the back as well. Stags goal by number one, Will Consoli. Fairfield have built up this eight goal three, advantage. Jack ben Polanchi going in and winning Here's a face off as the pull. Just to try to give Sacred Heart something to work with. This is a clearing opportunity though. They took it back into their own D zone. It is successful. Johnny Morgan, the lone goal scorer with both Pioneer tallies. It'll settle things down. And you know, now for John Bosti's club, looking to try and get the likes of Jake Ward going. Likes of Sal Micchio going. Micchio on the ball right now. He wears one. Ward 51. Really not too many touches for him to speak of. 
John Murray's had a couple of looks as well, but yet to get it past Snyder. Morgan, pass in the middle looking for Mickey, but look at Snyder rising up to take that one in. Really good collection there from Will. Seen shots well, you know, getting the opportunity here today. And this was planned by Coach Baxter. Fairfield, it's almost a careless giveaway. They're gonna be, well, I thought they were gonna be fortunate there for a second, but it's a turnover and a chance now for the Pioneers to run. Trying to make this game end to end. Flag's gonna come flying out as tracking back with Shane Osborne, but he knocks down the ball carrier. And the Pioneers officially to the man up for the first time tonight. They had a chance earlier, but ironically enough, Johnny Morgan, one of his two goals, uh, negated the man up. Yeah, as you see there, Osborne bundling over the man from behind. That was Jake Ward that he knocked down. So a 30-second penalty against Osborne. But yeah, back to uh, Snyder quickly. Colin Consoli started both games for Fairfield. Everything fine with him, according to Coach Baxter. This is just one of those that the coaching staff need to see what they've got elsewhere. In a non-conference game, you're afforded the opportunities to do so. Consoli with the 46 save percentage through the two games, including 15 stops at Lehigh to open the season. I think they got to reset the uh, penalty clock back to 30 seconds. There we go. So I think the Sacred Heart players started moving before the whistle. Now we're underway here. Sacred Heart, one of ten on the man up this season. Fairfield kill off five of the six that they faced up until this point. Mickey O near alley, scores! Great finish down low, Sal Mickey O. Goal number 46 in his career, his fourth of the season. On the man up, give the assist to, I believe that was Tucker Spencer. And good work there by Mikio, utilizing Daniel Wilson, 24 and white as a bit of a screen. Nothing that Snyder at six foot five could do about that one shot going down around the ankles. And that goal came off of a Sacred Heart face-off win. Sacred Heart goal number one. And they're going to go back to back here, though Fairfield dislodged that rather quickly. And a flag comes flying. John Weed able to save that possession far side as he goes flying into the bench after being pushed out of bounds. Now Fairfield on a delayed penalty. Looking to take advantage of it here perhaps. Bryce Ford as we saw him Utilize that space and patience to great effect at the end of the second quarter. He's not going to move until he really has to, just taking more time off the clock here. As both teams trading goals in this third quarter. Ford from low to high, a great feed. And Fairfield get another one. Jake Gilbert getting on the board. The first year for Massachusetts. The third goal of the season. He scored now in all three of his games in a Fairfield jersey thus far. And Ford able to, able to find the man at the apex and Gilbert able to do the rest. The former U.S. lacrosse uh, high school All-American. Xaverian Brothers and two-time Catholic Conference All-Star as well. Another one of those the young players that's being brought into this team that Fairfield are expecting really high ceilings of throughout their career. That goal, by the way, does negate the potential man-up opportunity. Does restore a stag six-goal lead. A clean win for Nicky Cassano, and he's going to drive straight at goal. Big hit from behind. Sacred Heart will keep possession here on the scramble. That one off the post. Ward trying to stuff that in. A little reverse shot there. Yeah, Cassano got hit hard from behind. So a delayed penalty coming. Mr. Sacred Heart just got a man up goal a moment ago. 
Spooner lost his balance, able to keep possession though. Great agility from the senior out of California. Ward, shadowed by Antoniou, gets a shot off. That was wide of the target. Fairfield still trying to touch up though, and now they get it. Fairfield though are kind of screaming for a push from behind, but the flag goes anyways, and Sacred Heart, second time in as many minutes on the man up here. Just got one from Mikio a moment ago. And it was Tucker Spencer that did have the assist. Spencer in his first action this season. And at Essex, Massachusetts, 30-second penalty. I think that should be on 51, Eli Adams. Put 61 up. The clock's got to start. There we go. Man up opportunity now for Sigurd Hart. Number 51. It is 51. Eli Adams. Eli Adams. 30 seconds. Mikio. Extra pass near side. Just couldn't find the connection. And a nice hit. Oh, no, they're not going to call that a nice hit. That is a foul against Daniel Wilson. He looks incredulously at the official there saying that it was just shoulder to shoulder. Take a look at this one here. I mean, if anything, yeah, you could call for the foul, but the referee is going to say head contact. And I guess you could, yeah, on the second look, that, that does make a bit of sense. So still 15 seconds left in the Adams penalty. Now Wilson is going to sit. A senior from Levittown, New York. It's a six on four situation. I think it's for a minute, and it is for a minute. It's kind of a misery compiler there for Fairfield, who seemed like they had a chance to get the unforced turnover from Sacred Heart. One minute. Now the Pioneers, two-man advantage. Great read, though, to deflect that pass. One man comes out of the box now. So it's a six on five here for the Pioneers. That pass across, great read far side. P.J. McGoldrick making a play. That Fairfield bench across the way absolutely fired up. Absolute scenes on the far side, though. Fairfield turned it over. It's a run out here for Jake Ward, but the referee is going to stop and say it's a foul, a hold, and Fairfield will keep possession. What a couple of plays, though, by P.J. McGoldrick, the sophomore from West Islip, New York deflecting not one but two passes in that sequence. First one on six on four man down, then the second six on five. Still another 10 seconds to go on the man down. The Fairfield, late getting across the timeline, actually too many across here. Sacred Heart, five more seconds on the man up. They will not run. So the Stags do kill off both penalties. Still trying to go Mikio, swings it far alley. That one rips the pipe. Jake Ward got a great look off there, and I think he might have actually rung both posts on the shot. But danger averted for Fairfield. They kill off both penalties, one 30-second on Adams, the minute-long penalty on Wilson. And the Stags now add to their lead here. Ford, great find far side, it's unbalanced. In transition, Fairfield get another. Kevin Dolan, first year from New York. Former All-County Honor at Ward Melville High School. Picking up his first goal in a Stags jersey. Fairfield 10, Sacred Heart 3. A six foot four inch attacker from South Setucket, New York. Coming late off the bench in substitution. A great feed to the far side. He unloaded that one. That's got to feel good for him. He played in both Fair games goal, coming into today. Got one shot off as well. Give the assist to number 21, Max And Max Paparozzi will get the Five assist to... He's got a goal and an assist on the day. Fairfield doing a really nice job at spreading the offense as well. Turnover, though, 
If there is one part to Fairfield's game that has not been a, a good part, or a good spot, I should say, it's the turnover game. Fairfield now a dozen to Sacred Hearts 12, but the faceoffs have been good. Obviously, good balance scoring has been there. Special teams have been good as well, and obviously getting good work from young Will Snyder in goal, making his collegiate debut. But again, playing a solid two and a half quarters is only just that, to play the full 60. Sacred Heart get one right back. Skyler Wild, the senior from Bayport, New York, ripping that one off to the right. His first goal of the season. That's the response that you need. Come on, six. Right after giving up one, go get one right back. Wild, who had 14 goals a season ago, including a couple against Quinnipiac, two against the Mountain League play. Keeping it in a six-goal game right now. You still feel like the way that this has gone here, it's been end-to-end -end at times, and both goalies have put on good shows thus far. Yeah, six goals is still very much gettable. Clean win once again by Dylan Smith, as he has had Nikki Cassano's number all night long. Smith is 11, or excuse me, now 12 of 16. Ryan Hamburger took one, but Cassano is now three of 11. And that was obviously a big question mark with the five-year standout, Frankie Labetti, graduating, played in the PLL last year. You know, who would be the man that would step up? And Smith has done a really nice job here today. He only took seven face-offs last year. But he has stayed hot from the get-go. Fairfield swinging it. That's a really tough pass for Osborne to collect. Thomas Houlihan with the ground ball. Again, like I said, Fairfield probably the only negative is that turnover game. Everything else has been solid. Oh, another nice play there. Kevin Dolan, who scored the last Stags goal, knocking that ball out of bounds. Sacred Heart clearing game has been awfully tentative tonight. Not quite all sure who's supposed to go in what position. Kind of everyone looking around at each other, and that's just easy pickings for any midfielder. Now Jake Gilbert, who split a couple of guys around the midfield line comfortably. will settle the offense down. It was 1-0 after one quarter, but halftime it was... 7-2, Fairfield outscoring the Pioneers 3-2 here in this period. Works here to Consoli near side. Great look in the middle. A good check. Believe that was Nick Handy, the closest man to dislodge that shot, or at least alter it. Gilbert was left open in the that little pocket. Moore, far alley now. Ford versus back to Moore. Consoli near side. McKenna right at Pazienza. Bounces to a free man, though. Fairfield keeping the rotation going. Consoli just wide. Good rotation there from Fairfield. It was Paparozzi with the quick stick to keep that play alive. Fairfield got the, the reset of the shot clock to 62 after the Pazienza save. Consoli with McKenna, extra pass to goal line extend, and it's a good look. Because after keeping the possession alive a moment ago, Paparozzi gets his second goal of the evening. The Stags now up seven by 11 goals to four. Just great ball movement. And Fairfield really right now just finding space all over the field. Good rotations. And it's not just the first line attack as well. It's the second unit, second unit mid that are making plays happen. You know, we've seen crazy things happen on you know, those midweek games. Men's lacrosse always seems to throw up a, a number of good spins in the context of a season. But Fairfield are looking to put together a performance thus far. And you know, again, through 40 minutes or so, they're, they're putting together a performance that they can really build upon. 
of it. They got a tough game coming up on the weekend as well. They travel down to Richmond. Spiders, of course, the uh, SOCON conference champion before moving over to the brand new Atlantic 10 League. Tilt's going to be for Sunday, and then Fairfield travel to Providence. And whenever the Stags and the Friars square off, it's always a high, high scoring game. Teams usually average somewhere in the low 30s in terms of total goals. And Stag's not back home until a couple of dates in early March against Bryant and Binghamton. And it's all league play. Mikio at the alley, comfortable for Snyder. By the way, he has looked comfortable from the get-go. He's square to every shot, and his scrambling ability has been great as well. Even to his rebound control, you're not seeing too many shots spill. And if they do, they don't go into those dangerous areas where guys can just scoop and score. Not too bad for a player making his collegiate debut. Certainly what he has done. He has given Coach Baxter something to think about. In terms of his goalie preferences going forward. And I guess that might have been part of the plan. And again, we say this, I've said this a few times. This is nothing on where Colin Consoli has done. He's been a, a solid tendy ever since he stepped foot on campus. But Fairfield wants to see what they've got in the system. You want goalies to challenge each other. Thus far, Will Snyder has stepped up to the plate. Josh Demko lost the handle of it. David Bartkiss on the far side, able to scoop up that ground ball. Save possession, or get possession back, I should say. And the Pioneers can get a couple of late ones in this quarter, maybe make it a five-goal game heading to the fourth. Still very much something to go and get. Johnny Morgan was two of the team's four goals, both in the first half. Finds Ward. Has to go back out to the top and wild. Or excuse me, that's uh, John Murray, my apologies. Murray dodging. And another save by Snyder. See, even that one where he had to fight that off and talk in the rebound control, he knew that he had a man off to his right. So get himself square, fight that rebound off to know where he's got a pull standing, and yeah, it becomes a simple one and done stop. And Eli Adams with the ground ball. Now getting to see Snyder in the clearing game. It's a great pass, and it's going to lead to a break here. Fairfield moving in transition, but a shot that was blocked. Ford had it, but didn't get it off cleanly. A turnover, though, for Jack McKenna. In on goal, and he scores. You're not going to keep McKenna down for long, still without a goal in this one, but he did have two assists. Now he gets his name on the goal-scoring side of the score sheet. Almost kind of like gang defending there, not gang rebounding, but defending as there is four players collapsing on the ball carrier to try and knock that ball loose. Another failed clear from the Pioneers, which is their fifth of the game. And the six foot six inch attacker from Fairfield, Connecticut. Able to get goal number seven on the season. Jack McKenna, time of the goal, 2-0-3. Under two minutes left to go, a holding penalty against Fairfield from the faceoff will give the Pioneers possession. Good look in the middle, but that's just a miss. As Tucker Spencer had the assist in the man up goal earlier this period for Sacred Heart. And he was right in front, goalie at his mercy and couldn't keep it on frame. Morgan dodging, working a goal line extend. Not able to beat Matt Rice though. Morgan, it's a good look, but that ball's gonna go over and back. And Fairfield will slow things up. They can hold for the last shot if they want to of this quarter. Braden Lynch into the offense right now. He's got to be careful here, able to find an outlet with Paparozzi. And Fairfield are going to take a timeout with a minute three left to go. Fairfield. 
again, keep it here during this timeout with 103 left as Coach Baxter recognizing that didn't have the right men that he wanted on the field during this potential last offensive look of the quarter. So he's going to talk things over here. Looking at Sacred Heart's upcoming games, this is the first of three games against CAA opposition. They're at Stony Brook on Sunday. Then they host Drexel across the way at Campus Field on March the 4th. But it's just one home game that they have in seven to start the season off because after that Drexel game, then it's at Siena, at Manhattan, and then the Pioneers host VMI on the 25th. And then they have a litany of home league games. They host LIU, host Quinnipiac, the Mount, and Canisius, those latter three in a row in April. On the opposite side for the Stags, as we mentioned, they'll be back on the road again for two after opening up with two road games. Probably their toughest little stretch of the season away to Richmond, away to Providence. Fairfield will host Bryant, who are a former NEC rival of Sacred Heart men's across a season ago, but the outfit from the Bay State are now in the America East. That'll be another midweek game, a Tuesday night under the lights on the 7th of March, and then Binghamton at the America East on the 11th, and it's all CAA play from there on out. Certainly got to be a pretty happy huddle right now for Fairfield men's lacrosse. 43 minutes, 57 seconds in the book thus far, and it's been uh, just getting happy days. And good ball movement. A lot of guys have found the net. Plenty of others also facilitating looks. Getting good action from the defensive unit. Will Snyder in his debuts made nine saves and goal. But now it's finishing the job here, and you know that that's going to be coming in the next huddle for Coach Baxter in, in between quarters three and four. No doubt that there's going to be some personnel alterations in that period, but the standard remains the same. Underway now after that Fairfield timeout. Josh Demko. Playing pitch and catch with Ford on the far side. And Fairfield are attacking the end with the scoreboard. So they'll certainly have an exact idea of how much time that they have left to operate with. Shot clock doesn't really factor in. It's a three second differential. Bryce Ford, far side, a goal and three assists today for the redshirt junior. 18 seconds left. And this is where Ford's going to make his move here. Ford, dodging off to his left. Tight angle chance. It was a great play by Candelino to rush the shot there. It's just a whip around and fire from Pazienza. It's actually a pretty good you know, fling, all things considered. Fairfield got a look at the end of the quarter, but ultimately their advantage still stays at eight. It's Fairfield 12, Sacred Heart 4. When we come back, we'll have the fourth quarter action in a moment. You're watching a presentation of Fairfield Lacrosse here on the Stag Sports Network and La La Lacrosse TV. Just about ready to begin the fourth quarter here from Rafferty Stadium on the campus of Fairfield University. The Stags outscoring Sacred Heart 5-2 in the third quarter after a 6-2 output in the second. And it's a comfortable advantage right now for Fairfield. The rain's starting to pick back up a little bit here as it was pouring uh, during warm-ups here. And actually we were having some mixed precipitation. We still haven't had snow officially here yet in Fairfield, but still nonetheless, it was not all that pretty, but the weather subsided right before the start of the game, only just to have a bit of mist now here for the final 15 minutes as the Stags able to get possession across on the clear, but sailed out of bounds from Antoniu. Zach Antoniu, probably just the lone you know, mark against his name on the day because he has been solid as ever. Three ground balls and was one cause turnover. Fairfield's first failed, no, excuse me, second failed clear of the day. They're 15 of 17. 
But Sacred Heart fail right there, so the Stags right back onto it. Matt Rice able to fight off a defender. He'll slow things up here. Don't see too many changes. This is the second unit for Fairfield on mid and attack. Still with Bryce Ford out there, but Coach Baxter keeping the same group out to begin this quarter, and perhaps we'll see some rotation as we go throughout the rest of the period. Ford, again, still plenty of time to work. Driving near side, flips across. Fairfield cycling. Rob Moore has a goal on the day. Looking for an outland goes with Will Consoli, team point leader with four goals and an assist. Down to 15 seconds left in the shot clock. Stag's got to go. Bryce Ford, nice dodge, and he scores. Or excuse me, that was Jack McKenna, my apologies. Jack McKenna, his second goal of the evening. Just able to ride this challenge here of Candelino. Shrugged it off and just put it home short side. And again, after scoring two more goals in all 14 games last year, we had a great output in the opener with five against Lehigh, but in game 16 in his career, finally held just a one, but he restarts a new multi-goal game streak goal. here tonight. Dylan Smith in a spot of bother. Still gets the flag anyways as three Pioneers collapsed on him. It'll be another man up opportunity coming for Fairfield. And the Stags are 0 of 3 with the man up here tonight. Stags defensively have been very good on the man down defense, including killing off the six on four. I'm going to see, I think this should be a 30 second against Sacred Heart. Oh no, it's going to be a minute on counter Callahan. So a minute penalty. Giving Fairfield plenty of time to operate and try to perhaps get a double digit lead. I want to finish off the night tonight by Sacred getting Heart one penalty. EMO. Number 37, Tucker Spencer. They'll get to Ford near side, extra pass. McKenna looking for the Hattie. Shot was blocked. Goalie is out of the crease, and then he comes back in. A great work by Alex Pazienza, who I don't think had that shot come all the way through, but still did enough anyways to find the ball. Sacred Heart with the clear, now just have to run on another 23 seconds. Barkis, though, goes for goal anyways and scores. Sacred Heart goal. What a finish there by the grad student, David Barkis. Man down goal. That's one way to fire your team back up. And this came after a block shot. Pazienz able to find a clear outlet. And Barkis just ran by everyone. No one slid over to him. You see... Daniel Wilson coming over late, but far too late to stop Barkus. That's his first point of the season. Probably something that Fairfield didn't want during that sequence was to give up a goal with the player advantage. Still 21 seconds left, so they still actually have time to win a faceoff and perhaps Same get a man-up goal. goal. Five, Dylan Smith with yet David another faceoff win. Goal, he is 15 of 21 on the night. Came in today with a faceoff win percentage at 45.5. That is going to skyrocket. Fairfield are not going to rush here, so they will not get a man up goal on the sequence. The Pioneers getting a man down marker. Fairfield settling into their offense with Josh Demko. That pass is too tall there, and it goes out of bounds. And this is one of those things uh, I bet you Coach Baxter was telling his team going to the fourth quarter, you want to play the full 60 minutes. Keep the standards where they were from the start of the game. 
naturally, of course, when you have a lead as large as Fairfield did, you, know, you don't want to have the foot come off the gas. The Sacred Heart have to hurry to clear this one. This will go straight in on Snyder, who picks that out of the raindrops comfortably. You, you never want to have your foot come off the pedal. and you know, Mentally, you're not thinking that as well, but sometimes even then, the best of teams will not be able to uh, kind of sustain the level so the, the 60 minutes, but maybe perhaps giving up a man down goal gets the fire back in the belly for the Stags. Ford. Jake Coleman comes back here to Jake Gilbert, who has a goal today. One of, I believe, seven different goal scorers for the Stags in this contest. Passes a good one, and Bryce Ford finishes it off. It's a great assist, though, for Rob Moore. He's able to see Bryce just pop out. Goal line extend on the near side, and it's an easy finish, but it's all about the feed here. Kind of drew that defender out towards him. And you see Ford just immediately point over to the sophomore, Rob Moore. Moore with a goal and an assist today. Bryce now five points. Two goals, or excuse me, no, that completes actually his hat trick. Six points now. Just jumping past Consoli for the point lead in the game. Stags goal, number 20. And this will be a foul. Face-off win to Fairfield as Connor Callahan gets called and whistled for it. The rain's starting to pick up just a little bit more now with 10 minutes to go in this one. I'm starting to see the players slipping a little bit more. Of course, of even the best of surfaces, this brand new field. That was laid before the start of the fall semester. Even then, players are going to still slip a little bit. Just human nature. Tight angle chance for Moore goes wide. Fairfielder are coming off of one of the best defensive performances in a long time on Saturday, only allowing seven to Wagner, which is the fewest allowed in a game since giving up five to NJIT in the uh, 2017 season. Or excuse me, 2018 season, my apologies. Trying to better that here today. What a save by Pazienza, taking that bullet from Consoli from some distance out. Fairfield win the ground ball, though, the shot over the mark. And the backup is Fairfield. Rob Moore, right place, right time to keep the possession alive. Resets the shot clock as well. The Stags are going to press, though. I think they would perhaps start to manage the clock out a little bit here. Ford switches fields. Consoli. Now Max Paparozzi gets the one-on-one, -on -one, dodges another. The ball movement, though, from Fairfield still crisp with this first unit. Low to high, a great look. It's better save from Pazienza, denying more. And Ford will just let that ball trickle out of bounds. And another shot clock reset. This has to be a bit demoralizing for the Pioneers. Just you know, They're getting saved from Pazienza. Now at 14 in the game, but they just can't get the ball back. This is upwards close to a two-minute possession now for Fairfield. It's another shot whistles wide. It's the 40th of the day for Fairfield. They reset the shot clock there. So, yeah, Pazienza gets another save. Actually, no, I don't think there was a you know, the far side referee is going to go over. They'll just recall. Eight oh three left to go. John. 
Fairfield still zipping again that ball around as Consoli try to let it fly from this near alley. Gets a good look though. Another save from Pazienza this time denying Jake Gilbert right on top. Pazienza had 45 minutes in relief against Fairfield last year. Stopped 10 in replace of Nicky Labaca. He's certainly getting his work here today. Shot clock again reset after that save. Consoli, extra pass, far alley. Fairfield zipping it around. The shot just whistles wide. And a timeout taken by Sacred Heart. And I think for Coach Bosti, this is one of those where his defense just needed a breather. They, the Stags have been holding on to the ball. Actually, give you the exact mark. Since the Bryce Ford goal at 10-13, yeah, Fairfield have had a three minute long possession. The Pazienza since giving up that goal from Rob, or excuse me, from Bryce Ford, he's made four saves. This is where coaching staff can just use one here to kind of give his guys a little bit of a breather and certainly for Coach Bosti and the rest of his staff plenty to take away from this game. Certainly no questions about Pazienza. Frankly if it wasn't for him Fairfield could be looking at 18 or 19 goals. And the Stags, I mean the quality of chances, that was something that I was speaking with Coach Baxter a bit about last season. Quantity versus quality, and you know, Fairfield they obviously want a bit of both. They want a high volume of shots, but a lot of those shots coming from those high scoring areas. And you know, of the officially credited now as 42 shots, 29 have been on target. And that doesn't include the ones that ring off the pipe as well, and there have been a few of that as well. So Fairfield, they're making the most of their possessions. Sure, the, the turnovers are going to be something that Fairfield will want to clean up with the 16 on the day. But the face-off wins have been great. They've caused nine turnovers. They're getting the stops and they need to defensively. Just been a good day at the office. But again, you just want to see it out here. 17 seconds left in the shot clock. Again, this is going on a three-plus minute possession as Fairfield have had four reloads. McKenna. Fires that to Paparozzi, but off the end of the stick. And it's kind of a disappointing end for that possession of, from the Fairfield perspective. You have so much time with the ball there. You want to find the back of the net. And Alex Pazienza thankful that he didn't have to do any more work in that sequence. But against Sacred Heart, their clearing game has just not been good. 13 of 20. Pazienza has to again just fire it across. And that's not on him. Nothing on Pazienza there. That it's kind of like in football that, that that's a coverage sack, where you just have so much time as the defense to keep on your marks. You basically force the, the quarterback to take one or throw it out of bounds. And that's kind of the latter, which is a coverage stop. And it's again more offense here for the Stags who continue to take the air out of the ball, but also managing the game out. And now we're starting to see some rotation coming in. Tommy Elliott into the game for the first time. See Cam Barrasano. That's a 10 Elliott, Barrasano 14 in on this attack. Shot got deflected on the way through. Good work by Nick Handy to block the effort. Now's McKenna with the shot. But again, now with just four seconds to get it across the timeline, and that pass got batted down. That'll be a push from behind. That's kind of a frustration foul from Palanchi. Fairfield had possession back anyway, so they'll just keep on. And basically, this ball in the fourth quarter has lived off to our right. Even with the second and third unit coming on for Fairfield, doing a really nice job. 
is Barrasano. Now to the alley. Bryce Ford's still out there, though. Ford, that pass just a bit too tall. He's able to recover. Riley Sullivan wearing four. He's in on the attack. The former BU Terrier now with it out of Wilton, Connecticut. McKenna scores. Just add one more for Jack McKenna. Fairfield up by 10 here with under five to go. McKenna now. Couple of goals on the afternoon on the evening, I should say. Actually, that should be his hat trick. I don't know if one got taken away from him earlier, but anyways, Fairfield up comfortably. Now you're starting to see a few players come off the field here the last couple of minutes. You're gonna see Ryan Hamburger come on to take a face off. Junior from New Jersey. And it's a violation against Callahan. He and Cassano just have had nothing go for them from the restart. Give the assist to number four, Riley Sullivan. Riley Sullivan picking up the helper. That's his first point in a Fairfield jersey. And you're starting to see just numbers of jerseys come off the field. A lot of new bodies on. It's uh, Malcolm McGinnis, number 52, out of Calgary, Alberta. Man, that doesn't actually feature a lot on 6v6, mostly using man-up scenarios. But he's getting a run out here. Sullivan. Works to Barrasano out wide. Barrasano will look and he scores. Kevin Dolan after getting a goal earlier finds Barrasano who puts it down low out of the reach of Pazienza. I mean, you kind of see this in basketball, right, where the guys at the back end of the bench, when they get their action, make some of it, everyone gets fired up. Well, these guys are fighting for spots, you know, fighting for minutes. And they're making the most of it here. This is going to be a goalie change, by the way, for Sacred Heart. Uh, I believe that's Nikki LeBanca is coming in for the last few minutes. Fairfield are going to keep Snyder in there. And, hey, why not? He's done enough to earn himself the full that's 60 minutes. Number 14, Cam Barrasano. Jason Assistant LeMay Jr., 34. who wears 12, into the game for the first time. Now a goal for Sacred Heart. Number yeah, 40. LeBanca, the senior from Denville, New Jersey, LeBanca. in there. Played a minute 34 against St. Joe's in mop-up duty with a save. Getting about four here tonight. And again, Fairfield, who have just ice this game and they're going to keep adding to it as Sullivan gets his first. He had a tally just a couple of moments ago on the assist and now he gets his own. And the Stags are truly running away with it here. Again the defensive output has been sensational in this game. This is uh, kind of similar to what we talked about uh, from uh, earlier on this game where Fairfield putting up the similar mark that they did um, years ago against NJIT. I think that was 18-5 or 17-5. We'll look that one up and get to you in a Stands second. Number four, Riley Sullivan. Time of the goal, 325. Sacred Heart finally get possession. Yeah, 18-5, March 19th, 2019 lowest defensive output in the game. Fairfield have obviously tied that. If they keep it that way, it'll stay. But 17 goals here tonight, again, being just super efficient with their shots. And they're spreading the offense. Flag comes out against Fairfield, so it's a delayed penalty on the Stags. And Sacred Heart now, they're just trying to end the night on some positive note. That shot goes off the side of the cage from Morgan. This will be the fourth man up opportunity now for the visitors. And it's never easy, of course. And it's never, it hasn't been easy for the Sacred Heart offensively this season. They've been held to just six and a half goals per game across the two that they've played last year, held to single digits on six occasions. Of the 13 that they've played. Fairfield penalty. And you get the foul five. on Brady Stroud. Brady Stroud, 30 seconds. 
So a short man up here for the Pioneers. Had one earlier today, but they're two of 14. Look on the near side, the shot goes wide of the mark. That was taken by Skyler Wild, who has a goal on the evening. 11 seconds left on the man up. Down to five on the man up. Comes to the near alley. Great slide by Fairfield. Tight angle chances wide from Ward. Man up is done. Still 29 seconds left on the shot clock. And now really if you're Sacred Heart, you just want to get one more good offensive look. Even if it doesn't go in, just find that space. Run it in your system. End the night on a good note. Garb throws it in the middle. The pass took a deflection on the way through. Fairfield will get this one comfortably. Now they do. Horn goes anyways as Caleb McNall picks up the ground ball. Stags can't officially see it out. So perhaps they'll take one more look anyways. There's about a 17 second differential game to shot clock. And Jake Coleman's just gonna take it to a corner here. Allow a few more players to come onto the field as well. Coleman, the junior from Pleasantville, New York. Sullivan flips it far side. McGinnis had a goal last season in seven appearances. Trying to play a two-man game now with Barisano. Down to 10 on the clock. Sullivan already with a goal and assist and duty here in the fourth quarter. Sullivan puts that wide. With three seconds left, Fairfield will just put it to a corner, and that will be just about it. Well, for Fairfield, absolutely no complaints in the performance for the first time at home in this 2023 season, job done. 17 goals scored, obviously just the five conceded. Bragging rights in the town of Fairfield will also stay on this side as well as the Stags win it. 17 to five, balanced scoring all the way around. Six points from Bryce Ford, five points from Will Consoli, four from Jack McKenna. Amongst a litany of goal scorers, Will Snyder in his debut at home, making nine saves, only allowing five. And again, the lowest goal output since the 2019 season where Fairfield held NJIT. That was on the road, mind you, as well, to five. Next time Fairfield men are in action at home will be on March the 7th. It's a midweek game against Bryant. We'll have it for you here on the Stag Sports Network and Lacrosse TV as well. Sacred Heart in action on the road this weekend on the 26th against Stony Brook. They'll be home for the first time this season on March 4th against Drexel. For everyone here, I'm JJ Duke signing off. Fairfield win the Crosstown matchup over Sacred Heart by 17 goals to five. We will talk to you all next time. Enjoy the rest of your evening.